OMG guys, so our new family members are here! Ooh. <gasps> They're so cute! Hey guys, we will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Please subscribe! What's up my boy high squad? How you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Guys, welcome to another vlog here at the Mabuhai Squad farmhouse. It's all dark because it's currently, what time is it? 6, 12 a.m. Sun is rising. Guys, we have a big vlog ahead. Alexa, kitchen on. So, um, today, guys, uh, our family is about to get larger. And I say our family, meaning our family of animals. <laughs> now, several vlogs back, I mentioned that ever since our, I guess, full house tour of our property and our farmhouse here, uh, you know, went viral on YouTube, thanks to several things, um, including the Karen Davila journalist um, feature of our home. RJ and I have been getting non-stop offers for animals needing homes guys because i guess just there are so many animals that need adopting that need rescuing all of that we've been every day rj and i get um emails uh from people who can't keep their pets anymore and they just want to see their loved animal go to a, a you know a good home <sighs> and so yeah, every day we get offers for pets. Uh, if RJ and I were pet hoarders, we we would have so many animals right now. Like the Mabuhai Squad farmhouse would be Noah's Ark. Um, so yeah, like we've had to turn a lot of animals away, sadly. But we have said yes to a few people. Now, one of such people is actually a friend of ours. Um, and you guys saw him in a previous vlog. He's none other than the famous... Enrique Hill. Yes. So in case you're not from the Philippines, Enrique Hill is a super famous celebrity and actor here in the Philippines. And a cool guy, actually. Totally our type of peeps. He loves animals, loves nature. Um, he also has, I believe, like a rest house and a farm. But uh, he asked me and RJ several weeks ago if we were able to take in three of his animals um, because he was moving out and isn't able to take care of them anymore. And guys, this is just sometimes what happens in people's lives. You know, you, you take in an animal and then um, life happens and you can't care for them uh, in the same way that you thought you could when you first acquired them. So um, after speaking with RJ, we decided, yeah, we'll take in the animals um, and try our best to provide them a loving home. So, guys, stay tuned to see what those animals are. I believe they're coming today. We offered to go pick them up uh, from his location. So, Mabuhai Squad, our family's getting bigger. Oh my gosh, guys. Yes. Yay. Look at the weather. Look at how beautiful it is today. Finally, guys, after a whole week of non-stop rain and typhoons, we finally have a beautiful day. Awesome! Which means this pool is probably warming up right now. Because over the past few days, if you saw the previous vlogs, it's been quite cold. Yay! I'm so happy. What a beautiful day. Awesome sky. Ooh, guys. Look who I found! Such a pretty beetle! It's a scarab beetle of some kind. Gorgeous! Oh! There he goes! Off into the skies! And yay guys, look! Fresh fruit! We've got dragon fruit here. Oh, you guys know dragon fruit, right? It grows from a cactus. And then my favorite fruit of all time, well next to Aratilis, mangosteen! <gasps> oh! I've missed these. It's been a few days since I've had some. Let's eat some now. OMG guys, yay! Let's eat some. So it looks like this. In case you're new to mangosteen, see? It looks like a little cherry bomb from Mario Brothers. Um, but when you open it guys, the best, 
most delicious fruit you've ever tasted. It tastes like a Jolly Rancher, guys. It's like sour and sweet. You just pop that off, like so, and then you press it to open it. See, and it just opens. Look, and look at the inside. <gasps> this is a perfect mangosteen. So it looks like that. See, look at how beautiful that is. Oh man, and let me tell you, this is a superfood. Tons of antioxidants. They say it's anti-cancer. You eat, mm, you eat the white part. Now those fat white sections, they have a pit inside. I'll show you what the pit looks like. But I eat all the small sections first. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. So you eat the flesh all around it, and the seed looks like that. Looks like a, kind of like a, a bean, sorta. Um, but that's what you don't eat. Oh, but see this whole bowl? I can finish this all by today. Honestly, it's the most tastiest fruit you've ever tasted. Um, see? And they, the tops just pop off just like that and it leaves this hole that makes it easy to open. Now, some of you uh, from other countries where they don't grow this mangosteen have said that you've tried it and like you said, it tastes good, but it tastes, it tastes kind of sour. But my impression is you guys aren't mind blown. Um, and I think it's because you have to have it fresh. Like if it's traveled over an ocean, then I don't know how good it can be. Mmm. Mmm. Like one of you guys said it tastes like a raisin. I'm like, a raisin? Okay, no, that's what, that's what this tastes like, the rotten ones. <laughs> <laughs> Not a mangosteen in its best form. Mmm. 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 Oh my gosh. Look at like that. Mmm. Mmm. Yum. Mmm. <gasps> mmm. That was a whole team of them without seeds. Mangosteen, I love you. These mangosteens are five Mabuhay stars. <laughs> Let's check the aviary. Hi guys. You must be so happy. It's sunny now, but it looks like they're napping right now. This is their napping time. Hi. It's so sunny. We can actually draw that retractable roof now. Isn't it great? Yeah. And yay, look at the new bromeliads. You guys saw in the last vlog, just hung these, planted some into the wall, and they are getting some awesome sunlight. Yes! Grow, my bromeliads, grow. Oh my goodness, guys. <gasps> okay, so that sunshine was short-lived. It's raining again. And this time it's full wind. Whoa, crazy. Let's open this. Whoa. Guys, look at, look at the bamboo. Man, I am not going to swim because I hear thunder too. Look at the forest, guys. Wow. Oh my. Crazy. Look at these leaves. Okay, this is a typhoon, I think. That's crazy how fast the weather changes. Oh, listen to that wind. Listen. It's scary looking at all these trees like sway in the wind. It's a bit scary. OMG, guys. Let's close this window. And guys, literally five minutes later, Stillness. Isn't that crazy how fast things can change? Okay, no, no, it's raining. I spoke too soon. <laughs> and no, it stopped again. Alrighty, Mother Nature. We get it, you're unpredictable. What?
What's up, Mabuhai Squad? How you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Guys, it's a beautiful day today. Um, so yesterday, the animals uh, weren't able to make it here, but our driver is currently um, on his way to Enrique's house to pick up our new babies, I guess. Even though they're not babies, they are, uh, they're full grown, but this will be interesting, having some new animal friends. And speaking of animal friends, it looks like one of the blue napes is finally playing with that toy. <gasps> who is that? Is that? I don't know who that is. Okay, well, process of elimination. This here is Marcelo. I can tell by his size. That is probably Clara. So this must be Gabriella. Oh, she is destroying that ball thing. Love it. By the way, if you want some like naturalistic um, bird toys, be sure to visit birdtricks.com. They have a whole bunch of these parrot toys for sale in the US, I believe. Not sure about internationally. This one came to us uh, in a gift box from uh, Jamie and Dave from Bird Tricks. They sent me a nice gift. And I love it, it actually blends well with the aviary because there are no colors. Like see that toy over here? Those colors really stand out. But if it's like natural colored like this, it looks not so um, abrasive. And as you can see, Clara is loving that toy. Finally, it took them a few days to warm up to it. Good morning, Marcelo. You happy? Lots of sunshine. Mm -hmm. Let's see how long it lasts though. <laughs> wow, she totally destroyed that ball. It's on the floor now. Good job. <laughs> oh, continuing with the balls. Love watching the parrots. They're so engaged, guys. I mean, one thing's for sure, I can tell you that my parrots are not bored. <laughs> Back when we had Ligaya, our late African Grey, um, back at when I'm, we were still living in my condo, I was really concerned that she was bored. Like we offered her so many foraging toys, um, different toys that, you know, engaged her brain, like where she had to use her mind to get at snacks in hidden places. But I still felt she, there were times she was bored. So whenever I hear you know, that certain parrots, like particularly the larger or medium-sized parrots. I remember when I was researching, some people saying that African greys are good for apartments. But looking back now at when we had an African grey in our apartment, our little apartment, which was like even smaller than this aviary, I disagree. Um, <clears throat> Something's in my throat, guys. Uh, but yeah, I disagree. I don't think any medium-sized parrot is okay for an apartment. Unless it's like a big open like condo where there's like a lot of space to fly and the enclosure is maybe a room uh, where they could, you know, really go around and get their beaks into trouble and, you know, all of that stuff. Keeping birds is hard. Like, to keep them in to keep them stimulated, it's not a, they're not an easy pet to keep. It's a little spider. Hi there, spider friend. Uh, go eat roaches, go, go, go. Guys, look at how beautiful it is today. Oh, look at that sunshine. Beautiful. See that guys? Polly the robot is vacuuming the pool and I hope to get in there at some point today. Hoping it stays sunny, but as you guys know, the weather has a mind of its own. So guys, today is also a big day because they are starting work on our farming lot. Yay! See? So there's a tractor way down there. See? That will help level all of this today. Man, there's a lot of work here to do. So they're just clearing out the area, clearing all the, you know, materials there used to be a barracks here for many years like where the workers would keep all their stuff and we used it for storage they're gonna clear all of that now guys i can't wait 
for this all to be developed to start growing our own food to have chickens we're gonna build um, a proper pen for Billy our goat and also have um, an aviary for the birds a big one I don't know where but there is a lot of space here this entire side lot here is I believe 2,200 square meters or 2,500 square meters something like that and it extends all the way down there down to the creek and a little bit of the other side so the plan is to just level all of this off make it kind of flat then I guess the next step would be to plot where we are planting things where the path walkways will go I'm really excited for this phase of um, our construction journey of developing our farmhouse um, because there's a lot of work here to do but it's exciting love these ongoing projects I wonder if we could build like an enclosure like through a tree in case we have like you know like for example for the iguanas wouldn't that be neat we could move the iguanas in their own enclosure that incorporates an actual tree hmm this here is a storage unit um, I'll take you there one day but it's kind of like a portable it reminds me of like portables at school did any of you guys study in a portable oh my gosh wow guys look crazy it's really happening <gasps> they're tearing up like even concrete the concrete bed that was created when they built the barracks that's all that's all going now I'm gonna start from scratch Wow as for me I'm here in the studio at my computer trying to get some work done for Ants Canada um, which is my other channel um, trying to get as much work done because I know when our new family members come I'm going to be obsessed and preoccupied um, so I'm trying to get as much work as I can done for this week's Ants Canada video oh my gosh guys look destroyed see what I mean this is why trees have no chance to survive in this aviary with these birds currently in it OMG, they're here. Oh my gosh. Hi. Oh, guys, this here is a sugar glider. He must be so scared. Hi there, buddy. Hi. Oh my gosh, and here are the others. Oh my, he doesn't look real. Guys, this is a blue iguana. Blue. This has been my dream. How, how long have I been saying that we need a blue iguana? Oh, hi there. Oh my, look at it, guys. It's legit blue. <gasps> oh my. Okay, we're gonna have to, we're gonna move him into a larger enclosure. And guys, here is the third friend. A red-eared slider. Hi there. Hi. Oh, is this a male? Look at the, look at the claws. I think that's a male. Okay, this will be going in our pond. Oh my gosh, okay, so we're gonna move him into the large bird cage we have and he's gonna be situated near Adam and Eve, our other iguanas. Oh my gosh, he is stunning. <gasps> oh, guys, a blue iguana has been my dream. He's big though, he's bigger than Adam. I'll have them with an eye shot of each other and you know, if they do show signs of uh, wanting to fight. I definitely won't mix them, but we'll figure it out. OMG guys, so our new family members are here. Ooh. <gasps> They're so cute. Okay, so this is where the sugar glider will go for now. Um, this is an awesome setup. Uh, I think RJ and I will go shopping for a larger enclosure for the sugar glider. So. It can really like have a lot of space to exercise. We also are going to look for a female for this sugar glider. Um, I'll show you what a sugar glider looks like later, guys. If you don't know what they look like, they are really interesting creatures. It looks like a hybrid between a bat, a monkey, and like a flying squirrel. Anyways, 
I'll show you guys that later. He's gonna get a female at some point. But first and foremost, I need to look for some wood. Wood that will hopefully float in our pond um, because the turtle will need it as like an island for refuge. Let's hope this floats. Okay, guys, I don't know what we're gonna do if this piece of wood does not float, um, but we'll see. Okay, guys, there's the cage where the new iguana is gonna go. I want them within eye shot so they kind of get accustomed to each other. Maybe one day we can combine them, but <laughs> Ate Elsie and Ate Karen are tripping out at this blue iguana. Okay, guys, I'm gonna see if this floats. All right, so let's hope this works, guys. One, two, three. Please float. Yay! Awesome! Sweet. Okay, let's add the turtle in. So this water has been cycling. We're gonna turn on the water fountains in a bit. Uh, this water has been cycling for weeks now. So um, hopefully the filter, the filtration has all the necessary bacteria it needs to keep it clean. Um, but we will continue to swap out water. We'll use some of this water to water our plants. Um, and of course it's rainy season, so it's always refilling. Uh, I believe currently there's a leak somewhere in this pond, so they're fixing that, um, which is why the water level is low. But that's okay. So the turtle has a nice area out here to absorb some UV light, which turtles need. And then it's also got a nice shady area under here uh, where it can just kind of relax. Ideally, we want the water to come up to just about there. Not high enough that the turtle can come up here and start eating all the plants, uh, but just kind of like around there. All right, let's move him in. There are a lot of, guys, tons of tadpoles in here. Lots of tadpoles. The turtle will have a field day hunting them. Um, there are also guppies in here. And uh, the turtle is currently eating pellets, so we'll also be feeding pellets. Okay, guys. We're gonna try to move this iguana into the cage. This is gonna be tricky. There's Adam, there's Eve, watching what's going on. I think they see their new friend. Okay, here we go, the hard part. Now, I, I don't know how friendly it is, but so far, it seems pretty chill. Hi there, buddy. Hi. I just need to grab the stick. Hi. Hi there. You are so nice. Hello. Good boy, yes. It's okay. Don't be scared. He's too scared. Good boy. There we go. Oh, you're so. You're fine. Go climb. Climb. There we go. Welcome to your new home. He is totally non aggressive. Whew. There you go. Yes. You're so gorgeous. The most beautiful iguana I've ever seen. Wow. He's definitely bigger and older than ours here. Um, now our good friend who rears these, Mario, who we got our iguanas from, who owns literally hundreds of them, says that if they're young, they could be mixed. R despite like what gender they are, like what sex they are they could be mixed if they become acquainted they do need a lot more space if you do mix them um, like I, w I don't think I would mix these three together in here unless they really don't show aggression with each other but it's risky because these two males might fight over this female so we'll see I mean it looks like this iguana really loves his his new home. Now, I believe this iguana grew up indoors because um, I can see that there was a heat lamp, a UV lamp above his setup, but he's going to truly 
like benefit from all of this natural sunlight and we will have him on a top iguana diet of dark leafy greens um, and some supplements. Wow, never in my wildest dreams would I, did I ever imagine we'd ever have a blue iguana. And he's so surprisingly, like, chill. They're checking him out. <gasps> That's your new friend. Now, for those of you who don't know about green iguanas, they're strictly vegetarian. They eat veggies, but they will eat like, like a pellet, which contains some protein, but our iguanas just eat veggies. And in the wild, in like Mexico and South America, they live in large groups, they live in colonies. But um, it's important to socialize them at an early age. It really does look like this iguana has been socialized since he was young, because look, he didn't tail thrash me, didn't try to bite me. It's just those claws, they can get really sharp. Look, his claws totally destroyed these, these gloves. I grew up with iguanas. I love taking care of iguanas. I know what they need. Um, and it's so much easier to keep them in a tropical country like the Philippines because you literally just need to keep them outside and they have all the quality sunlight they need. Give them dark leafy greens like kangkong, kamote tops, um, and a bunch of local veg that we offer our iguanas. And they're good. Um, our friend Mario even says, like here in the Philippines, because they get such good natural sunlight, they don't need like vitamin supplements and like calcium supplements like iguanas in North America need that don't have the same quality of sunlight. Okay, buddy, you are about to move into the biggest setup you've ever experienced in your life. These here are red eared sliders very popular um, pet in the reptile trade. Again, I grew up taking care of these. They grow really big. Sometimes when they, like they're sold as little tiny hatchlings and then people buy them and then they get so big that they don't realize like, oh, I don't know. Like when they had bought them, they didn't realize how big they get. And so they end up um, giving them away. Just because once they reach a certain size, they need a lot more swimming room and they're just a bit more maintenance. So I'm going to put him now in the pond. Yes, this is your new pond. You ready? This pond was like several years in the making. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, here we go, Mabuhai squad. Dropping him in. I wish I could just lower him down. Wait, I'm gonna get on my knees, reach down so he doesn't like, it's not like crazy. Okay, that's the lowest I can go. Ready? One, two, three, go! Ah! Splashed in my eye! Ugh, all that dirty water went in my eye. Okay, where did he go? Oh, there he is. He's way in there. <laughs> Look at him. He's like, what? Where am I? Yes, tons of tadpoles for you to hunt. And insects and leaves fall in here so he could eat those. Look at him. <laughs> oh man. Look at that, look at him go. There you go, buddy. Look at all the tadpoles swimming away from him. I wonder if his instincts will kick in now. Like if he'll know to hunt. But we will uh, be feeding him pellets every day just to make sure he's eating okay. Awesome. I really hope he enjoys his new home. Hi, Melody. <laughs> There's Melody. Gosh, that dirty pond water in my eye. I hope my eye doesn't get infected now. <gasps> the iguana cut me. It's okay. I was scalded by our dragon. Yes, we are now blood brothers. Oh, all right, okay, gotta go through my checklist of things we gotta do. Gonna start the bonding process with the new sugar glider soon. I gotta teach RJ how to do that. I'll show you guys too how the bonding process works. For sugar gliders, um, not an easy pet by the way, but that should be interesting. Um, we're gonna be putting a shade over the new iguana's cage, um, just so it has some shelter. Uh, and as for the turtle, gonna feed it this afternoon and uh, keep checking up on it to make sure 
it's able to, you know, make this transition from an indoor animal to now an outdoor animal. There we go. It's got some shelter. Hi, uh, hi there, buddy. Welcome to your new home. All right. The falls have been reactivated. Gotta keep this water circulating now. Guys, we're looking at the turtle. He's so cute. He's right there. See him? Right there. Swimming around. This is more space than he ever knew possible. He's now <laughs> underneath this patch of floating lettuce. Guys, we're fishing out a, a toad, a cane toad. They're invasive. And we're going to throw it over that wall so it's gone for good. There he is. Wow, look at him. That's one happy turtle, guys. I see a guppy. Do you guys see it? Right there. There's a guppy, see? There are several that live in here and they help eat the mosquitoes, the mosquito larvae. And if the turtle is able to catch them, they can be his food too. Yes, yes. I love building ecosystems and natural biological communities. All right, guys. So here I have a super worm and I'm gonna see if he's willing to take a snack from us, a treat. Hi. Hi, look, I got something for you. Got something for you. Yeah. Right here. Here he comes, here he comes. See his little nose? It's a super worm. Hmm. I know you want it. Huh? Come on. Come on. Don't be afraid. It's quite delicious. Yeah. Mmm. Here. Do you want it? Here, I'll put it closer. There. See? See? Yeah. It's for you. There you go. Mmm. Yummy. Oh my gosh, sugar gliders are so cute. All right, so in case you're new to sugar gliders, that was a sugar glider. Petaurus breviceps, I believe is the scientific name. They uh, originate in um, Australia and like surrounding regions. And guys, they are marsupials. Do you know what that means? That means like they belong to those group of mammals that have pouches, like kangaroos, koalas, and all of that. And they happen to be om omnivorous. So they eat both plant and veggie matter, and then they also eat insects and meat. Now, they're nocturnal, so they wake up mostly at night. What's cool about them is they have this membrane that attaches from their like wrist to their like ankles. It's a skin that allows them to glide. So they're like, they're like that's why they're called sugar gliders. Um, they're kind of like flying squirrels and they live in the treetops, they wake up at night, they hunt for insects and they also eat a bunch of like different things, flowers, uh, pollen, they eat like acacia gum and exudates from trees and stuff like sap. It's a very complicated diet that it, it's not easy to master in a captive setting, but there are several, uh, I guess, recipes that you can, where you can use everyday household ingredients, blend it all up, and then feed it to the sugar gliders, along with insects, like that superworm you saw it eat, and um, other treats. So I had my first sugar gliders, I had two of them, way back in like 2005, Dante and Shante, and I got so obsessed and involved about learning about sugar gliders that I even went to this like international convention, guys, about sugar gliders. I became friends with Bourbon, who invented one of the most popular sugar glider diets uh, called BML, which is probably what I'm going to feed this sugar glider. Not easy to make, by the way, but yeah, uh, became friends with Bourbon and just researched sugar glider diets. It's a constantly evolving science and understanding as to what these 
creatures, which are very exotic, need in this world, in captivity. We're gonna try our best, guys. They live for up to 15 years, and they can bond with humans. I'm not sure how well bonded this can be to a human. Um, apparently, this one is about two years old, and he lost his partner, another female sugar glider, last year, sadly. So he's kind of lonely now, I guess. Um, but there is a process to bond with them. It involves taking their pouch, which they sleep in, and wearing it under your shirt, around your neck, constantly giving it treats, and you know how it is. They just have to get used to you. And then, if they're really bonded, they'll even stay on your body. Only thing about sugar gliders, though, as pets, that I feel is a drawback, is they wake up at night. So you need to be a night owl if you plan on spending time with it. And me and RJ, we like sleeping at night. And, and we, you know, we know it affects our health, especially at our age, to get a full night's sleep. So we do eventually hope to get this sugar glider a new female to bond with, to keep him company when he's up at night. <laughs> Look at him. He's probably cleaning now. Hi there. You looking for more? You see that bald patch he has on his forehead? That's how you know he's a male. It's like a scent gland. Hi, you're so beautiful. Hi there. No, I'm not Enrique. I'm not as guapo. But I'll be your friend and I'll take good care of you. He seems very well socialized. Like usually a non-tamed sugar glider will make this really crazy sound. It sounds like a goblin laughing and it's actually kind of scary. But I haven't seen him do that yet. <laughs> there he is cleaning himself now. On Sunday, we're gonna go to the pet market and buy him a big cage so he can really like jump around and stretch out his membranes and stuff. I have thought about, guys, putting him in our aviary because he would certainly do well there. However, I'm afraid at night he would chastise the parrots and possibly even try to eat the smaller parrots. So I said, no, we can't do that. Ah, oh, guys, animals just give me life. I don't know what it is. Ever since I was a young kid, I just loved, loved, loved animals. I still do, even at my age. And all I care about are that animals like live well, whether they be in the wild or in captivity. Just want them to live their best lives. All right, guys, so you might be wondering where RJ is today. He's actually in bed because he's not feeling well. He's been up all night. Going to the bathroom, he has some kind of stomach flu and is currently having a fever. So just letting him rest. I'm taking care of him too um, and uh, helping him recover. But I got this. I got the animals. I got the animals under our care. Um, Enrique Hill, our good friend, if you're watching, thank you so much for reaching out to us and trusting us with your pets. We here we'll do our best to give them a loving home. Guys, I'm gonna check up on Billy. There's Billy. He's busy eating some bushes and he sees me coming. My most handsome, beautiful goat. Hi, Billy. Come here, come, come. Here he comes. How are you, Bills? Hmm? We're working on your side lot. Yeah, we're gonna make you a nice, Nice pen, finally. Mm -hmm. He's got like a miniature temporary house that we've built for him as a shade. Um, but during the day, he's mostly out here eating greenery, as you can see, eating grass. Um, and he's such a great goat. This is him smelling the air. Yes. Okay, Billy, I'll be back, all right? Wow, guys. So as you can see, they've already tilled all of this soil. See? They're just flattening the entire area. Wow, they've removed all the concrete back there. They'll be back tomorrow to do more work. So it's sunset now. It's been a beautiful day. There was like a few brief periods of rain, but for the most part, it has been sunny. Thank goodness I have missed this weather. So the pool is probably nice and warm. I'll be hopping in, I'll be hopping in there later. But it's been a few hours since our friends have settled in. Let's see. How are iguanas doing? My gosh, like from far away, he looks like blue highlighter. Seriously, like you see the green iguanas right there, normal color face. And then you see this bright blue, like 
neon lizard. Hi there. Are you liking your new home? He's getting ready for bed. Hi. It's okay, no need to be nervous. It's just me. Welcome to your new home. So we've put Kong Kong down there for him to eat. There's water. He's gonna need his own tub to soak. Um, but I think he's I think he's chilling. Just getting acclimatized. Like with these reptiles when they're so used to the same spot and they have a sudden like environment change. Like I mean this is super different from what he's used to. Um, they kind of get nervous. They need like an acclimation period. So he's gonna be slightly stressed over the next couple of days. But so far he's looking nice and comfortable. Adam and Eve here are also getting ready for bed. Ideally, it would be awesome if this lizard can live with the other green iguanas, but if I'm going to mix them, I have to supervise them really closely. And it has to be like when they've gotten used to each other. I think eventually I'm just gonna move this cage like closer to the cage, to their pen, so that they actually get to smell each other and see each other through the bars close up. And I'm just going to judge to see how they interact over like over a long period of time before making an introduction officially. Guys, let's go down into the sunken garden and look for our turtle. I love that this is here. All right, there's our floating island. And I thought I saw him swimming underneath. Guys, I don't see him. Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, I don't see him because it's dark and like the sun's not shining through so I can't really see to the bottom. I mean, he's got to be in here. There's no way he could climb up these sides. Um, let's see. I got to ask Enrique what their names are. Oh, turtle. Where'd you go? There he is. I see him way down there, exploring that corner. Do you guys see him? There he is. <laughs> He's all the way at the bottom, exploring. <laughs> He's checking out all corners of his home, guys. So this plant here is Amazon Swords. Um, I'm very familiar with this plant back when I was doing Aquascape. And these runners that they're sending out are new Amazon sword plants. So I'm just gonna break this off and throw it in the water so it can grow into an Amazon sword. So these become new Amazon sword plants and I'm gonna throw them in the water because I want them to like grow out. Uh, see, they're already kind of moving towards the water. They want to go to the water. Let's throw these somewhere down there. All right. I want to encourage the growth of lots of aquatic plants because aquatic plants eat up the toxic nitrates that are produced by the waste from the tadpoles, from the fish, and from our new turtle. See, like all of those water lettuce there and any plants that are touching the water, they help plants eat the nitrates, that toxic substance that is produced by like rotting material and waste by the animals in the water. How cute! Do you guys think we should just give the animals names ourselves? Or should we just use the names they already had when they were when, with Enrique? Maybe the sugar... I wonder if the sugar glider has a name. Hi there. Don't be scared. He's a little nervous. You are so gorgeous, you. Beautiful. So, so beautiful. Enrique really did a good job raising this iguana. So healthy. But see how he's puffing up his body now? He's trying to make himself look big because he wants to scare me away. He's kind of nervous. It's okay. I won't hurt you. He has to learn that b me being around will not hurt him. All right. Sleep well. My dragon, my blue dragon. Gosh, I just love reptiles. Love them. Guys, look. Look at him. 
He's so cute. Just floating there. I think he's looking at those plants thinking, what are those and can I eat them? I just love the look of this waterfall, of both of them actually. So zen. All right, I, I'm gonna leave the turtle alone. Gosh, sunsets here at the Mabu High Squad Farm are so, so pretty. Sunsets anywhere, guys, so pretty. So because it's evening, um, our sugar glider upstairs will be waking up soon. Um, I'm excited for that. Uh, gonna be offering it some new food. We'll prepare its meal later. As for the turtle, um, we actually are expecting another larger female red-eared slider to come to us um, any day now. It's gonna be given to us by our friend Mark Matsuyama. You guys know them. Um, we agreed to take in their female turtle like since two years ago. So uh, our turtle now will have a companion. And speaking of sunsets, I believe this is the perfect time to enter the pool. It's been a couple days since I've swam because, I mean, the pool just got really cold since the rains that passed. Oh, oh, slightly on the cool side still. Oh, but not as cool as it has been over the past couple of days. This is not bad. All right, let's dip, my boy squad, let's dip. Ah, yes. Oh, yes, the best. Oh, I missed swimming. I feel like our new turtle. So guys, what, what should we name our animals if they don't already have names? I have to check the messages between me and Enrique. I think he did tell us the names of one or two of them. OMG guys, up in that tree is that beautiful kingfisher. I don't know if you guys can see that, but wow, beautiful. I wonder if it's been hunting in our pond, like eating fish. <gasps> awesome. And guys, honestly, the birds have an awesome vantage point of the Mabu High Squad farmhouse. Like, have you seen the drone shots that we took during the tour? They are awesome. So if you're a bird flying over the farm, you have such a beautiful view of the property. Like, see these birds flying around? They have a gorgeous view from where they stand. So as you guys know, um, this pool is awesome for meditation and for like not only relaxing and exercise, but also meditation. And like, I love to swim looking at the sky and kind of contemplating and connecting to the Lord, thanking Him for all the blessings Earlier, I just thanked God for the new animals that just came our way. And it's just, so I find swimming, guys, to be so spiritual. Like, look at the reflection off the water. It's so beautiful and relaxing. I love that. And the leaves that kind of fall from the tree and onto the surface of the water that float by, like here, it's kind of like a spa of like natural leaves and flowers, like releasing its nutrients into the water for us to absorb. So, so zen, I love it. So guys, I think I'm gonna cut my swimming short this evening because I wanna be there when uh, our sugar glider wakes up um, so I could prepare its meal. Guys, another one of those black-naped Orioles. See that yellow bird up there? Beautiful! I love the wildlife here, the endemic wildlife here in the Philippines. All right guys, let's get out of the water. Let's prepare to welcome our new sugar glider buddy. All right guys, so um, in terms of the sugar glider's diet, currently um, the sugar glider has been eating Seralac, which is a kind of like a baby formula food. So um, Enrique's been feeding Seralac, but I think we're going to graduate him off the Seralac. We'll wean him off and start feeding him the traditional BML diet, which I had success with in the past. Uh, but I'm not going to start feeding 
the sugar glider BML straight off the bat because I need to like slowly gradually um, convert him to this new diet. Um, but for tonight we're gonna give him Cerelac and I'm gonna also give him pieces of fresh veg. I'm gonna cut up some of this <gasps> broccoli. He's gonna look into the, his bowl and be like, what is this stuff? But I'm gonna mix it all up. Oops, let's hope he likes it. Um, the BML diet, by the way, guys, is like a ton of ingredients. I need to blend it all up in a blender and then freeze them into ice cubes and feed them a cube every night. Like it's, it's pretty intense and contains um, ingredients like wheat germ and all of this. Honey, uh, egg, a bunch of stuff. So I'm still like looking for some of the ingredients. I should have it by Sunday. Um, some of them are hard to source where I live here in the Philippines. All right, so I think this is enough. And then I'm gonna stick in some berries, some dried goji berries, um, like so. He's gonna look into his bowl and be like, what is this? I'm gonna give him some nice fresh mangosteen, my favorite fruit, yes. He's gonna love this sugar for sure. He's gonna be like, what is that? Mm. All right, okay, let's mix that all up. And I'm gonna drizzle it with a little bit of honey. In BML, there's honey in there. Let's make this nice and sweet. Mm. Okay, that is a lot, but anyways. I'm also gonna add a little bit of walnut. I remember my sugar glider used to love pieces of walnut. It's got some healthy stuff in there. Some nice crunch as well. They have um, front teeth that like are used for breaking through the bark of trees so they could get into the like exudates of trees and the gum of acacia. So they like a little bit of crunch in their diet. All right, so this gruel now contains the Cerelac that the sugar gliders used to, as well as like some raw constituents, which will comprise its new diet when we convert to BML. Now guys, just a reminder that this isn't the sugar glider's permanent diet. It'll only be on this ex particular diet for a couple of nights. Um, so don't all you sugar glider like keepers, don't come at me. I know, I know. I just don't want to be too drastic with converting the sugar glider to BML. All right, there we go. Sugar glider's gonna love that. I'm going to wait for it to come out, or should I put it in now? I'm just afraid ants will get to it before it actually does. So for now, I'm just going to keep these in a secure place until this one decides to come out. All right, and before it comes out, I want to refill this. Oh, this water bowl. Did you guys hear that? He made the, he made the sound. Sorry, it's just me. I'm just getting water. Don't worry. He's waking up now, and he's trying to scare me away. Hi there, buddy. Don't worry. Oh my gosh, guys. He is scared. Do you hear that? It's okay. Don't worry. I'm just refilling the water. I know. I know. Just refilling your water. They're really scary when they're scared. <laughs> They like open their mouths and they make that scary noise and they throw their claws up in the air. It's a bit intimidating if you're not used to it. And they can bite and it hurts. Do you want another super worm? Here, I got a super worm for you. He's, cover he's covering his face with his tail. Come, here, super worm. Super worm, he's smelling. See? Come on. It's okay. Here. I gotta twist this. Don't be scared. Look, I've got a treat for you. Here. See? Yeah. Yeah. Hi there. Good morning. You are so sweet. There you go. See? Mmm. Another super worm. Do you want it? Here. 
Okay, let me get your other bowl. I, I've prepared some nice food for you. Not feeling the super worms right now. Here, how about this? Look, I got this for you. Come on, don't be scared. Here, look, I prepared a nice bowl. Yeah, mmm. Oh, he's loving the food, look at that. He's loving that. Yeah. I'm your new friend. My name is Mikey. What's your name? Mmm. Delicious, right? Here, come out. Mmm. Dinner's ex extra special for you. It's your housewarming gift. Come out. Yeah, see? See guys, look at how beautiful these animals are. They're unlike anything. You guys might have seen before if you've never seen a sugar glider. The first time I laid eyes on a sugar glider, back when I was 17 years old, um, I was working at a pet store and one came in and I bought it. I, I like, just fell in love. They're such interesting, cute and intelligent animals. Come on out. Hi. Yeah, this is my finger, don't bite it. Oh, he's such a sweetheart, guys. What do you guys think? Isn't he cute? Okay, I'm gonna put the ball down so you can have more. There. Look at him, guys, he's coming out. He really wants a taste of that, he's hungry. I knew it. I know what sugar gliders love. See that, guys? He is loving that. Now look at their body. See what I mean? They've got this long tail and they've got this membrane that attaches from their wrist all the way to their ankles on both sides. And in the wild, this allows them to kind of stretch out like a kite and glide from tree to tree. It's really amazing. And it looks like he's loving our food. He's chewing something. I wonder what. Is that the carrot or the broccoli? Or the mangosteen? Or is it the goji berry, hmm? Such a stunning animal, right guys? Gosh, it's been honestly a couple of decades since I've ever uh, seen one. So cool. Now this will be its cage for the next couple of days um, and we will be moving him to, we're, we're gonna look for a larger cage for him just because we're going to also introduce a female into his enclosure. Uh, it looks like he's got a nice nesting place here and down here. Um, he's got a tunnel here to run through um, and some kind of sticks that run back and forth for him to kind of jump around on and perch, I guess. <laughs> He's so cute. He's loving our dinner. I knew it. Don't be scared. He's scared because I just opened. He's going back in his pouch. It's okay. I'm just going to be putting in your super worms in case you want some super worms. Don't be scared. Look at him peek out of his... I'll put the super worms right there for you, right next to the cage bar so you could like grab them from the side. You are so cute. Look at his eyes, guys. Nocturnal eyes are crazy. Look at his cute little nose. You're so cute. I think we're gonna get you another pouch too. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm, I just got out of the pool. I'm still in my Speedos. Um, so I think we're also gonna get him another pouch or pack or maybe make one with clips so that it can wrap uh, like there could be a draw strap that could wrap around our neck and we could wear him under our clothes during the day so that he could subconsciously bond with us and get used to our scent. He's already been socialized, clearly. Um, Enrique has definitely done a great job at socializing that sugar glider uh, to being used to humans um, because I've seen some nasty sugar gliders, guys. OMG, 
Shantae, my old sugar glider, man, she would bite. Um, but this one seems pretty chill. All right, I'm gonna leave you alone for a bit. Enjoy, I'll be back. Now I've got um, some repti cal reptile calcium and vitamins here that I use on um, our iguanas, but I don't think I'm gonna use it right now because I don't know if the Ceralac already has ample supplements in them, and I just don't want to overdose with the supplements. So I'm gonna opt out of adding this right now. <laughs> and look, he already came back out. How cute. He loves our mix, guys. This is great news. So guys, I'm here checking up on the sugar glider and he's out playing. Hi there. Did you eat your superworms? Um, no, doesn't look like he did. Hi there. Did you enjoy your breakfast? I'm about ready to go to sleep soon. Yes, hi. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. Mm-hmm. Do you like your new home? You're gonna move into a bigger place soon, okay? Don't worry. Hi. Oh, you're so sweet. You guys wanna see the underside of a sugar glider? Look. Okay, never mind. There he goes. He's gonna run around. Gosh, they are so cute. So guys, um, I had a chat with Enrique, and this sugar glider's name is Suga. Hi, Suga. Oh, Suga, Suga. Dun, 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 dun. Honey, honey. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, don't worry. I'm going to get you a friend very soon. But meanwhile, we are going to start bonding tomorrow. Guys, he ran all the way up there. You are so cute. You're so cute, sugar. Yeah. Hi there. Yeah. I'm your new friend. Mm -hmm. He's quite calm around people. This is good. All right, I'll leave you alone. Enjoy. I mean, this is the home he's used to but it's clearly in a different place and I'm clearly a strange person. So, enjoy the ant room and have a good night, Suga. Welcome to your new home. Good morning. Guys, it is early in the morning. I would say 5 a.m. Just woke up and checking up on Suga and he is eating right now. And I see him chewing, so he's been picking at all the little bits in his bowl, which is good. I see that he hasn't really eaten the, oh, I think he ate one superworm. Hi there, sugar. Uh, sugar, sugar. Dun, 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 dun. Honey, honey. All right. Anyway, good morning. <laughs> You're so cute. OMG, he just grabbed another superworm. Craving that protein, huh? Look at him eat it like licorice. Mmm. <laughs> Yum. All right. Enjoy. I'm gonna head downstairs now. Yes, guys. Coffee. A fresh brew of freshly ground beans. Mmm. This will wake me up this morning. Yes. All you coffee lovers. Unite. Gosh, look at that sky, guys. It is lavender. The bats are drinking again. I see bats all over the pool. Um, and it's just really, really gorgeous. 
Good morning, Sky. Good morning, Brittany. Hey. Hi, Brittany. Yeah. Did you pee and poo? Huh? <laughs> hey, Rizalzis. Good morning. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. So, it's around 7 a.m. The sun is starting to move here, and it will hit the iguana pen shortly. But I see that the blue iguana is already basking. Hi there. RJ wants to have this cage moved to like close to our kitchen under the anteroom just so it gets used to all of us just like these lizards went through when um, they first arrived just so the iguana can get used to seeing people used to seeing dogs it's kind of a high traffic area so yeah you're gonna move okay and then you'll eventually be back here but look at him basking wow oh and also guys he actually has a name. His name is Magnus. Hi, Magnus. I love that name. You're so beautiful, Magnus. Enjoy the sun. And Adam and Eve here are preparing to also get their sunlight. Um, I think they get uh, sunlight until around 9 or 10, which is totally enough to keep them warm the whole day. Give them enough sunlight. Now we've included a soaking area for Magnus. Um, we'll be giving them breakfast shortly and he'll definitely use that. He'll, and once, if he's in, he'll poo in there. There's a soaking area there for Adam and Eve. And let's see if we can see the turtle. There he is. So, Apparently this turtle, his name is Donatello. I love that name. Named after the Ninja Turtle. And a little bit about his backstory. He was actually rescued. So Enrique apparently found him uh, walking around his subdivision, which he thought was so strange because they don't have any like ponds or bodies of water nearby. So someone must have really like had him as a pet and just let him go, which is bad because these um, turtles can be invasive. Uh, but I mean, happy we found him. And now he's just totally loving the pond. I wonder if he managed to catch any of these tadpoles like swimming around to eat. Little does he know a big fat female is coming. OMG, imagine they breed. Guys, look at Sugar's tail just hanging out of his pouch. Hi there, Sugar. He's pretty much winding down for bed now. Now, I was going to begin the bonding process by removing that pouch and wearing it under my shirt, but I can see that that is tie wrapped to the cage, so I'm not gonna go through all the trouble of like removing that like getting scissors and removing that rj last night stayed up all night i showed him footage of the new pets and he went on shopee and went crazy with ordering stuff and one of the things he ordered were uh new pouches for sugar so i'll just wait till those come uh before bonding anyway he's still adjusting and getting used to me and all of that so that's good Hi there, I know you're going to bed. I'm just removing this. So he ate almost all super worms. There, there, it's okay. I'm just getting your bowls. And I don't know what he's eating out of here, but oh well. Uh, all right guys, so what an awesome two days it's been. I'm just so happy we have new family members to welcome here at the Mabuhay Squad Farmhouse. And um, yeah, thank you guys for being part of that journey. Um, it's a new journey. We're starting the farm lot. We've got new animals and man, it's like every day is an adventure. Thank you guys for being part of all of that. So 
This vlog is super duper long now, um, and if you made it this far, congratulations. Give yourselves a pat on the back. And if you haven't yet, please remember to hit the like button, um, as it really helps us a lot. It lets YouTube know that our vlogs are worth sharing to new audiences. I know you guys have been doing that, so thank you so much. And be part of the journey. If you haven't yet, so many of you are watching and you're not subscribed. I can see it in the analytics. So guys, hit that subscribe button so you could join our Mabuhai squad because we will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. I'll see you guys in the next vlog. Bye. Mm -hmm.